I'm sure most people in this room have heard about antibiotic resistance on social media and the news, i.e. the ability of bacteria um, which cause infections to resist antibiotics. Now, this problem's nothing new. Bacteria love to adapt selective pressures. That's why they annoyed me so much in the lab. Um, but it's our abuse of antibiotics that's causing this to become a massive health concern. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, is anyone, I'm hoping no one's going to put their hand up, has anyone ever ditched the last two tablets because they felt a bit better? Dun, dun. Yeah. So basically, again, that's building up resistant bacteria in your gut, sharing antibiotics with friends, and also our complete overuse of antibiotics, saturating the planet with them, um, is creating this massive population of resistant bacteria. Now, this would all be completely fine, but unfortunately, we've not got any new ones. Um, pharmaceutical companies are pulling out because they know the drugs are going to be useless in a couple of years. So it's a massive health concern. Now, there's obviously many strategies um, which we can do to combat this problem, including the development of new drugs. Uh, that's what I was doing during my PhD from gut bacteria, really cool little proteins. Um, also, tightening prescriptions on antibiotics. But I believe that these strategies are completely useless unless we educate the public, educate, educate the antibiotic users to know how to use them properly, to respect them. And for this, I feel like we need to target kids because they're the ones that are going to grow up and use these drugs. So I started doing this during my PhD, um, and I started organizing workshops. And one of my workshops was called the Bacterial Commonwealth Games, which was really cool. Um, it was all about bacteria and antibiotics fighting off against each other. You can also see my... My little mum, she came and helped me um, in one of the pictures. But it became quite clear to me that workshops um, were not going to do this. I mean, if you think about now, we're racing into this digital era, and kids, this isn't enough for kids anymore. The reach was also very minimum. I would work my ass off. I would work very hard to prepare a workshop and maybe only have 100 kids turn up because it was rainy outside, and it just wasn't enough. So I started to think about alternative strategies. And this is when I became interested in gamification. Now, gamification describes the use of game mechanics in a non-game environment to engage users. And when I say this, I'm not just talking about Flappy Bird. I'm not just talking about Minecraft. It's giving the user a reward for doing something. So let's think about Facebook. Has anyone ever put a post up just to get a few likes? Yeah? Instagram photo? It's all about this reward, this competition. And this is what our society is thriving on just now, this whole competition, doing better than everyone else, getting something in return. So I started to think about the use of this to change perceptions. Would it work? Could I exploit it? To change ideologies and raise an antibiotic-aware generation. So before I jump straight into my game and get all excited about that, I first want to kind of touch upon the perceptions which I had to change. So the Wellcome Trust done an amazing study last year which looked at public perceptions on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. And the results were startling. So they were interviewing normal members of the public between ages and um, 18 and 50, a mix of educated and non-educated people. And they found out there was a massive um, miscommunication about what resistant was. Many people believed it was the body's immune system that was becoming resistant and not bacteria. There was also this kind of blasé attitude, like, oh, they've always got plan B. You know, no one wanted to be really involved in this problem when really it's us that's causing the problem. So you can see this perception here where people just don't really care. It's not their problem. And antibiotics, well, what are they actually doing? We're not even sure. And then I wanted to think about the perception of the target, i.e. bacteria. Now, this has like, bugged me ever since I became a microbiologist. I'm like really sick of bacteria getting such a negative press. <laughs> like, why? I don't understand. So I was kind of like playing around um, a few months ago when I was doing a talk, and I googled the word Googled, googled the word germ, the common word for bacteria, and then googled the word alien. I like, does anyone spot any similarities there? Yeah. And this is the thing about the press: it's given this sort of message that bacteria are these like alien, negative, horrible monsters. When actually, if you think about it. Most bacteria are good, only a very small percentage are bad. Again, if you look at bleach adverts, anything like that, you get these sad little band signs, you know? It's, it's all really mean. And I feel like this perception is a massive contribution to the problem of resistance because no one really cares about the bacteria in their body. Uh, you know, chucking antibiotics down my throat like they're nothing. Whereas I think if we had a bit more respect for our bugs, we'd kind of start to think about it. So I'd like to first kind of 
talk you through the method because <laughs> this took a little bit trial and error. So if anyone's ever thinking about doing a game or wanting to use game in their business or in industry or research, this is what I'd recommend. So the first thing I wanted to do is I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do this by myself. I'm good at microbiology, I'm awesome at science, but I can't even draw like a tree. So <laughs> the first thing I wanted to do was set up a really meaningful collaboration. So this is when I started to approach graphic designers, um, for example, my flatmate, Siam, who I was living with, and started to think about people that had knowledge of gamification. I then wanted to think about the structure of my game. Um, so obviously I've mentioned that my target audience is school <coughs> pupils. One thing that's really kind of struck me recently is Schools don't have money. Um, I went to a school in Drum, pa uh, Drum Chapel to do a session and they didn't even have enough money for practical equipment. So I wanted to make sure my game was accessible, it was affordable, it wasn't just going to be for people that could afford it. I also really wanted to think about the target audience in the game format. I mean, there was no point making a game that me and my colleagues would sit and play. I really wanted to make sure the game would be accessible to kids, kids would love it, kids would play it even without being in school. And also, the key point is, I wanted to really decide what the learning objectives would be. So I'd say this to anyone, anyone that's going to do a resource, educational game, this is the first thing you have to do. Because once you've set these key learning objectives, you can go back and evaluate it. It's amazing. And obviously funding, because I had no money at the time. Um, so the learning objectives for the game that I designed were very simple. It was one, I wanted to teach that bacteria are not just germs and remove these negative connotations. And two, antibiotics are not 100% effective and do not kill resistant bacteria. So let's talk about the game. So the game is Bacteria Combat, um, and we thought it was really important to start off with a prototype. So has anyone ever played Pokemon? Top Trumps, Pokemon, yeah. So I really wanted to do a Pokemon Top Trumps game because ever since I've started working with bacteria, I've kind of always saw them as like cool little things that fight against each other. Um, so to sort of ensure the learning objectives were delivered, we had three sets of cards. So we had the good and bad bacteria. And on each card, we had like separate unique stats. So I'm not going to tell you everything about everything, but strength, generation, time, speed. So the strength score I determined by looking at the outer membrane properties of each bacteria. The generation time is simply how fast they double. So this is actually really cool because most bacteria have a unique time. So like Salmonella doubles every 18 minutes, which is why it gives really bad food poisoning. But then Mycobacterium, which causes tu uh, tuberculosis, takes like 18 hours to, um, to double, which is why it causes this chronic, horrible infection. And then there was the special power as well. And basically what I done for this is I translated like the unique gene that each bacteria had into a cool thing. So for example, Salmonella has a type 3 secretion system, so it had like an injection needle special power. So this was um, unique for each card. And then to ensure that the antibiotic resistance learning objective was delivered, we had these really cool joker cards. So this antibiotic uh, joker card's awesome, because you pretty much automatically beat anyone you're up against, as long as their resistance score is um, 50 or below, which was really cool. So yeah, so we got the cards printed, it was really cool. Went around tons of schools, that's me like having the best time ever. Um, and then started to test the learning objectives. So I said to you that we wanted to teach kids that bacteria were not just germs. So one way that I did this is I asked kids before and after gameplay, summarize bacteria in one word. So before gameplay, you can see up at the table, the words are very negative. They're also very, you know, there's not much knowledge there. Words like virus and mold came up, so they're nothing to do with bacteria. And again, there was that whole reference to monsters and just really negative words. However, through gameplay alone, and I must emphasize this is just gameplay, I did not intervene, I did not do some four hour tutorial session, the attitudes changed. Good and bad, strength, fight against each other, even cheeky little E. coli in there. So the red words are kind of like the most popular things that came up. So you could see that just one 45 minute gameplay session was able to change perceptions. I then wanted to investigate the antibiotic learning, learning um, objective. So basically I asked kids, antibiotics, 100% awesome, or hit or miss? So you can see from the graph that about 50% of the tested pupils, so we had about 300 tests, um, said hit or miss. Now I wasn't overly concerned about this because if you think about it, not every single player is gonna have their antibiotic card come up against a resistant bacteria card. And that actually made it much more exciting because in classrooms, 
different groups of kids were like discussing with each other like oh my god like the antibiotic card's like amazing whereas other groups were like nah mine didn't work and those kind of chats were like the chats that scientists have in the lab meeting when we're talking about our killing spectrum and our efficacy so this is what really excited me and made me think that games really do have this potential so obviously i've mentioned at the start that we're in this digital era and um, so i didn't really want to pretend that a card game is where i would stop here so i also asked the kids would you prefer this as an app or a card game and you can see that just over 70 percent did select the app option so this is when things get fun yeah, so I basically gate crashed um, a game design festival, um, Dare to be Digital, it's really good, it's in Dundee, and I um, was just going up to game developers being like, do you want to make a game on like bacteria? And most people said no, but <laughs> one, one development company called Future Fossil Studios um, loved the idea, they loved the concept, they really liked the evaluation, so they done me like a really good deal, um, and we started collaborating and working together to make this app. So this is the kind of screenshot of the first version. Um, so I want to emphasize to everyone in this room that making an app is probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. You can't just translate the prototype straight into you know, your Unity and your coding device. It takes so much trial and error, so much testing. I think we had about 10 mock-ups before we even had something that kids wanted to play. And also the fact is our funding really constricted us to doing a single player game against the bacteria bot. Um, so again, that was really hard because it meant the discussion was minimized. Um, but I'm really excited about how the game's doing. So we added some new features. So we've got like your card menu now, so you can go and like revise your cards and see what the cool points are. Um, and we've got tests and learning questions as well, which kind of codes into the computer and sees how your understand's going, if the gameplay's helping you understand. Um, so basically, the game is <coughs> now on App Store and Google Play. And we've got about a thousand downloads and all our evaluation is again seen, saying that these learn objectives are being delivered but not to the same extent as the card game so due to this we are now developing a multiplayer version like that um, and this is really exciting so i've done some testing in schools last week and it's looking amazing the discussion is back kids are again talking about antibiotics and the different bacteria um, and you can see that our whole design's improving as well i think one thing that i've learned through this is you can't, just because you think you know, that, you, that something looks nice and you think it looks engaging, you really need to test it with kids over and over again. Kids have such a higher threshold for what's good now. Kids are like designing mansions on Minecraft. So you need to really up your game. And I think it is really difficult because app developers and development is such an expensive process. Um, but it's all about finding the right team and people that really see your vision. So to kind of convince you a little bit more that gamification is awesome, I want to tell you about Poo Racer. So, <laughs> Poo Racer, <laughs> it's just as it sounds, um, is a project, <laughs> a project I worked on last year um, with, at Queen Mary University. So I was working with a group of bowel scientists that really wanted to make a game that would change perceptions on bowel health. So bowel cancer is a massive problem because people don't want to talk about poo. They don't go to the doctors and it's you know, the second biggest cancer killer. And I, you know, I really identify with this. I have bill problems. And you, know, you don't want to talk about it. It's not a nice thing. So basically what we've done is we got together. We made this awesome game. So the game works. You choose your poo vehicle. So you can either go the sludge racer or the boulder. Um, boulder's kind of slow, though. Um, you then race through the bill, collecting bacteria points, which you use to buy fuel at pit stops. So the fuel can either be good or bad food choices. So 10 guesses what happens when you get a bad food. <laughs> so basically the fuel choices can upgrade or downgrade your poo. So if you keep buying bad food, it goes into diarrhea. It's not, it's not, it's not nice. Um, but the aim of the game is to get to the toilet <laughs> in, in a healthy time of like 24 hours. So it's kind of showing you that everyone's different. No one ever has the same time, which I love about this game. Um, and it's also just so, you know, poo is just moving through a tunnel. It's <coughs> nothing wrong with that. Um, so we test the game with 100 kids. Um, we didn't have much more time to do tests than because the funding ran out. So it's, you know, it's ongoing. But I asked kids before and after gameplay, do you feel comfortable talking to your friends about poo? So before gameplay, about 10% of the group said yes. After gameplay, this raised to about 40, 50%. The error bars there just represent the difference between three groups. 
and I was so excited by this. And what was even more exciting? <laughs> it's exciting. Um, and what's even more, what was even more exciting is it was the players that played the longest that were more converted, which again just argues that gameplay alone can change perceptions. And I think this is really great. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to raise a generation of people that just talk about poo like it's nothing. Um, so this is also on Google Play, so download it, you know, go the sludge racer, so much better. <laughs> um, yeah, so just to finish off the talk, uh, I believe in this concept so much that I've now launched a startup in Edinburgh called Game Doctor, which aims to develop amazing digital games to change public perceptions on health. Our current project is called Fungal Invaders. Um, it's with Aberdeen University. And it's basically a really cool Space Invaders style game to educate on fungus, fungal infections, and antifungal treatments. Now, one thing I'd like to do to finish off this talk is talk about a strategy that I'm just thinking about recently. Now, one thing that's kind of frustrated me and restricted me by using games is there's a kind of difficult to reach audience. Um, ages kind of 16 to 26, some people don't really want to be engaged in games more than once or twice. So we're now investigating the use of film to change public perceptions on health. So we recently just filmed a film, shot a film, called Antibiotic Apocalypse. Um, this was really great. This was Game Doctor, Little City Pictures, um, and an amazing crew. And what we did in this film is we personified bacteria and we personified <coughs> antibiotics to show the interactions between in antibiotics and bacteria. So it's all kind of dancey, there's lots of combat going on, and lots of makeup. But we're really excited, this is going to be out in two weeks, so please do watch it, share it if you feel it really engages you. And we tested it last week with some college students, and again, the learning objectives were delivered. And we're really hoping that this film is going to really push to people how valuable antibiotics are and how dangerous resistant bacteria are. So I think there's a lot of um, stance for Game Doctor. I just, this is, I mean, an example of health stories in the news over the last four weeks. And I think, you know, problems like sexual health, obesity, one of the main issues is the public not having a good enough education, a good enough awareness on the problem to take re the responsibility. So I feel like by targeting them when they're younger, by giving them the information in a really non-pressurized environment, we can change public perceptions on health. We can make the nation more healthier through fun. And I really can't wait to kind of tackle more problems and, I don't know, probably make like a soundtrack next, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> um, so look me up if you have any questions, if you want to kind of do anything with us. We're such a lovely team. There's like three of us. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you so much. I'd just like to thank everyone that's been con um, collaborating with me over the past two years. And yeah, thank you.